Hey guys, Shane here. So during lockdown, I decided to minimize any risks of all the lockdown parties I was having by myself by making my toilet flush with a wave of my hand. I started out trying to use this switch bot, but just not enough torque to push the button down. Then I got the idea of using a servo with an ESP32 and ESP Home. This little king right here. There is nothing this microcontroller cannot do. If it's individually addressable LED lights, Bluetooth presence detection, can connect this little thing up to some load cells and create a weight sensor out of it. And of course, flashing toilets. There's almost nothing this little thing can't do. So my first attempt really was just to glue a servo to a bit of wood, run some fishing line down to the actual flushing mechanism in the toilet to pull it up. Version two was complete shit. Um, I used the same servo that I used in version one and then designed this kind of linear actuator thing around all of it with a kind of mechanism that you could slide into the button. But this servo is just not strong enough to push down the button. So then I got a bigger servo and stole some other guy's rack and pinion design because no one has time for teeth and came up with this puppy. Whee! All right, let's get into the nerdy stuff. Okay, so there's really three parts to getting this working. ESP Home controlling the microcontroller, mainly creating a service in Home Assistant to control that servo. An input number directly in the configuration.yaml within Home Assistant to create a control interface for that service and for the servo. An automation in Home Assistant that then connects that control interface to that service and then to the servo. It sounds like a lot, uh, and it kind of is. So we're just gonna gloss over like most of it real quick. I will provide a link to an excellent site where I got all of this info from, for all those masochists out there that uh, actually wanna learn something. So let's begin with the glossing so we can make this video an acceptable length. Okay, let's start with ESP Home. I'm not gonna go into how to install any of this. Um, there's so many videos out there for that. Just have a look on YouTube, you know, it's your resource. If we come in here, we can see a bunch of different devices. We're looking for the config.yaml for toilet. I'm gonna start with the hardware and move to the software side of things. Down here, we have the output. Under here, what you're really doing is just defining a pin, a GPIO pin, on the actual microcontroller board itself. I'm using GPIO 13 because they're right next to power and ground on, on the boards that I get. Have a look online. There is a bunch of resources out there with you know what to use, what pins not to use, all that kind of stuff. It, it's, yeah, it's easy to find. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an ID to reference that GPIO pin called servo. The ID is toilet. And why that's gonna be important is when we come up here and we create the service for the API, what will actually appear in Home Assistant as something that we can talk to. What we've got here is control servo becomes part of the name and the ID of that is toilet. So in Home Assistant, what you'll see is ESP home dot toilet control servo. And we're just gonna give it a some kind of level metric. And here we can just see that ESP home service that has been created. You can see here the ID and then the actual server control servo. And this just, again, allows that input number that we've created to control the actual hardware servo. From there, we're gonna jump into the configuration.yaml. I'm using Visual Studio Code because I think it's a great bit of kit for, for doing this kind of stuff with. What I've done here is create an input number directly into the configuration.yaml. What that does is creates a entity servo control, input number dot servo control. And we're just giving it a maximum and min range. We're just giving it a, a range. We're saying each step is one and the actual mode of the interface we want to create is a slider. 
So if we jump into the developer tools very quickly and just have a look at that input number, we can see here, it's just a slider control with this range of motion. I don't actually use this at all. Um, to control it, I use Node Red and we'll get into that um, a little bit later, but I just wanna show you all these moving parts first. And I'll just quickly show you how that works. If we go into the YAML view for this, we can see here that the trigger is the input number server. So that user interface that we've basically created. And the action down here is that actual ESP home service that we've created. And there's a little bit of logic in here to tell it what to do. Lastly, on the software side, we're just gonna have a very quick look at the automation that I've set up in order to use this. Created in here a input Boolean that gives me a manual flash control, like a virtual button. What that does is if I press that in the UI, so I've got my phone, press that button, sets the volume, plays get swifty. There is an excellent video out there um, of how to load web files that will be able to play on your Alexa voice assistants. Just have a Google, you'll find it pretty easy. It will set the toilet servo to 10, which basically means flushing it. Delay five seconds and then raise that back up again. Turn off the flush toilet boolean, which is the virtual switch. A delay of seven and then turn down the volume because it's pretty loud. I also have the motion sensor here that flashes the toilet and it's exactly the same process, obviously. Let's jump into the build process and have a quick look at how we put it together. The Thingverse link for this print will be in the description. After I printed it, I attached the pinion gear to the servo with some epoxy then bolted it onto the mount while lining up the rack. It's actually best to plug all of this into a breadboard, get it all powered up, and get the correct range of motion from the input slider that we created in the previous step. That way you know exactly the right parameters to use for the node red sequence. The other thing I found that was really important is to make sure that gear and rack is well seated so they don't slip. I find best practice if you're creating a project that can draw a lot of power, lights, servos, etc. Never power it through the board. Most of the cheaper boards you find on AliExpress just can't handle it and will die a lot quicker if you do it. I've found the best solution is an old micro USB cable, strip back the power and the ground and then solder on some jumper wires. As you can see here, I'm soldering the three jumpers together for each ground and power that's gonna then split off to the board and the servo. Always make sure that you use shrink wrap to separate your ground and power so you don't have any shorts. Here I'm just using a heat gun to make sure it's all nice and tight and secure. Connect up the ESP32 and secure it in the box. I found this box on Thingverse. Just have a look, find something that's gonna be good for your space. I used hot glue to make sure that those cables don't move around as well and then put the lid on. Okay, I think that pretty much glosses everything over. Not too much either way, I hope. Not too much info or too little info. I'm still trying to get the balance right on that. So leave a comment, let me know what you think. Is it too much, is it too little? Um, and if you do decide to build it, I'd love to see how you went with it. I didn't actually film the install because that's boring but I just wanted to quickly cover off using the version two. This is exactly the same. This, what you do is you get the button, you unscrew it a little bit, you slide this under and screw it back down. Just make sure your button is oriented correctly for you know whatever you wanna press, the, the single flush or the dual flush. Just play around with that button orientation. Also, you might just wanna check before you print this out, um, your button width. This is around 42 millimeters. So just make sure that it's gonna fit on your button. Really just exclusively designed for the round button type. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for now. I hope you build it and have fun with it and it works for you and many happy flushes. And I'll see you guys next time. The printer has finished. Please remove the print. Ah, printer's finished. If you wanna find out what that's about, check out my last video.